Good morning. Thank you for joining with us this morning. Chris talked about last week how we were going to have a uh, surprise speaker, and I guess I'm the surprise speaker. Um, just want to hope everybody's doing good. I miss you guys. I wish I was there with you, but you know I'm stuck here. But uh, all the craziness that's going on, it's kind of I'm kind of glad that I'm here and, instead of back in the states. But this morning we're gonna we're gonna be talking about things that we could learn from being in quarantine. You know, there's been a lot of a lot of talk about uh, essential workers and non-essential workers, and we're we're gonna kind of hit on that a little bit. You know, uh, the the truth is we're all essential. You know, G Jesus says many times in the Bible that we're all uh, essential. And Genesis chapter one verses twenty-seven, if you turn with me, it says, "So God created man in His own image, in the image of God He created him, male and female He created them." And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it. You know, he says, subdue it. And what what subdue it means is, according to the Webster's Dictionary, subdue means to conquer and bring into subjection. Okay, so you're saying we're supposed to conquer the world? Yes, but not like overthrow the government, rule the world ourselves. That's not that's what he means. You know, he means use our talents and, and make this world into something special. You know, and that's why we have all, all these different kinds of jobs, and it's so important. You know, whether you build tires at, at General Tire, or you cook food, or, or you teach kids, whatever it is, it, it's a key part to, to make this world go round. And, and God loves that. You know, God, God likes to see all these inventions and everything being made. Like, he, he enjoys that. I mean, if you invented something, and he created us, so he's watching his, the thing that he created create other things. And that makes him happy. You know, it doesn't matter what the government claims you are. It only matters to Jesus what you are. And he says you're essential. You know, with that being said, um, while we're supposed to subdue this great land, we must work hard and realize we shouldn't just be working for the money or to, to make ends meet or even to survive. You know, we should work for the Lord. You know, in Colossians chapter 3, verses 23, it says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for man. So, you know, some of you guys may be off work right now, and you guys are like, I, I do not want to go back to work. I can't stand my boss. I can't stand the people I work for. Just just so you know, you're not working for your boss. You're working for somebody much powerful than your boss and a much powerful position than your boss. You're working for Jesus Christ. Just remember that. When you are when you have to go back to work and you're dreading it and you don't you don't want to, just remember that, that you're, you're not working for him. You're working for God. And also, you know, I've seen... Most everyone has had a lot of time spent at home here lately. You know, there's no school, which means all the kids are going to be at home. And I've seen a lot of posts from, from parents doing different things and, and creative things on Facebook. And, and that's awesome. And I'm glad that everyone's getting to spend good quality time with, with their families. You know, um, one thing to think about is, are, are we ministering to our kids? I know we're going to spend time with them and, and it's time that we usually don't get to spend with them. But are, are we spending are, are we spending that time ministering to them? I mean, there's no churches open right now. There's no school, so you're their only source of, of life of, of of showing that that light of Jesus Christ. So if you would turn me to Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6, it says, "Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it." You know, I'm so thankful to have a parent in my life that, that ministered to me, you know, growing up. You know, my mom was always there. She was a great example to me, me and my sister. You know, she would always make sure we prayed for each before each meal, and we were reading the Bible every day, and we'd go to church Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday night. She always made sure that, that we'd be a part of that, and we'd go to that. You know, and that kind of that kind of laid a foundation for me and my sister that, that never went away. You know, sometimes that we, we put stuff on top of that foundation, but, you know, Jesus swiped that away and that, that foundation was still there. You know, I remember back in high school, mom went, you know, mom always has this instinct about if, if you're doing something wrong. And I think one time me and Shelby were at somewhere we probably shouldn't have been. We got texts on our phone of just a prayer from mom. You know, mom just typed out a whole prayer like, Jesus, be, be with these kids. I don't know what they're doing, but but just be willing. And I, I'm pretty sure me and Shelby just left because we felt bad, you know. And, you know, sometimes we got really annoyed by that. We didn't like that. But thinking back on I'm, I'm really glad she did that and I'm, it, it made me who I am so I, I appreciate that and it's so it's just another example of how important it is to to be that foundation and be that minister to your kids I also know throughout this time that we've been at home there's been a lot of good TV shows and stuff that come out on Netflix and one thing that we really liked here when we were watching is the last dance the 10-part documentary about Michael Jordan and the Bulls 
you know, while I was watching this, I've noticed something about Michael. You know, he wasn't given anything. He wasn't told he was the best. He had to earn that spot. Like in high school, he didn't make his varsity team his sophomore year. And he went to his mom and he said, Mom, like, this is my dream. This is what I want to do. I want to play basketball. And you know what she told him? She said, go out there and practice. Go out there and get better. And, and that's what he did. He kept practicing and practicing. And then he got to go to college. And then coming out of college, you know, he wasn't the best prospect. There were several people that thought he was not going to be able to, to handle the pressure of the NBA. And you know what he did? He took over the league. You know, he just kept getting better and better throughout his career. He didn't stay stagnant. He just kept getting better and better, you know. But as, as he got better, there was one thing that just remained the same throughout his whole career. And that was his work ethic. You know, he, he was determined to be the best. So he was always working on ways to get better. You know, and so, you know, we call Michael Jordan the GOAT. But even the GOAT had to practice. The greatest of all time, he had to practice. You know, for Christians, isn't, isn't Jesus, I know this may be cliche, but isn't Jesus kind of our GOAT of the greatest of all time? You know, wasn't he? And, and guess what? Even though Jesus was perfect and he was healing all these people, he still had to spend time in prayer with God. You know, he, he would slip off often, slip off and, and, and be alone with God. You know, turn me to Luke chapter 5, verses 15 through 16. One second, okay. But now even more to report about him went abroad, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. He would withdraw to desolate places and pray. So he would go in these quiet places, and he would just pray. Crowds were lined up trying to see Jesus, and instead of going to see them like he always did, he knew it was important to spend time, to spend some time with God. You know, I know Chris hit on this subject last week, but it's, it's so important part of our relationship that we need to spend time with God. You know, Jesus had crowds waiting on him to preach the word and to heal them. But instead, he knew that, that he needed some time to go off and pray and, and, and have that relationship and have that time with him in order to, to serve everybody else. You know, there's a ton of examples in the Bible of Jesus praying. Like Luke chapter 6, verses 12, it says, In these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued to pray, to be in prayer with God. You know, that's just another thing. He didn't just go there and say, Dear Lord, be with me, amen. No, he spent time with God. He spent some time alone. That's so important in our lives that we do that. This is showing us how important it is to have quiet time with God. You know, it takes practice to be that vital Christian. You can't just say, Jesus, please save me, and then and then you're good. No, we must spend time in the Word and prayer in order to grow closer to Him. You know, there was this there's his grandpa and his grandson. The grandpa gave gave his grandson a uh, an old dirty basket. He said, All right, go fill this basket with water. And the grandson's like, Grandpa, you don't hold any water. It's got holes in it. It's a basket. But the grandpa insisted. So the grandson goes to the water, and of course, all the water ran out by the time by the time he got back with the basket. But grandpa said, "Go again. Keep going." And so he went again, and every time he came back, the water had gone out of the basket. But then finally, after about two or three more times, um, he said, "Grandpa, this just isn't working. I, I don't get this. This feels useless." But then the grandpa said, look at the basket. And so the grandson looked at the basket, and it was clean. It was no longer dirty. You know, sometimes praying and, and reading the scripture and spending that time with God can feel useless. It can feel like you're just spinning your wheels. But just like that basket, it helps us and cleans us. And it's so important to our relationship. So, so if the goat, the greatest of all time, can spend time in the word, so should we. You know, I hope that we can we can learn from these times and, and grow from it. I know it's very easy to, to see the worst in all this situation that's going on. You know, with the with the quarantine and then you know, with the COVID and then when, once we get out of once it's finally starting to open things back up, now we have these riots and everything and it's 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 important that we can grow from this season and learn from it. Because I think that, that we need to try our best to take something good out of all this season. Out of this season. Uh, thank you for for uh, being with us today and uh, I appreciate uh, I've heard a lot of people say they're, they're praying for me and I, I appreciate that keep them coming um, I can't wait to, to be at home and, and see you guys again I will uh, hopefully I'll be able to do this again sometime uh, I miss you guys and I hope everything gets better back home I uh, hope you guys have a good day thank you